Greetings, Eric Back, a naturopath. Thanks for coming back. We're going to talk about unsupported doctors. Many, many people I've seen over a prolonged period of time have told me how unhappy they are with their current doctor. You know, whether this is a naturopathic doctor or a Western medicine doctor or acupuncture doctor or whatever kind of doctor, we're not discriminating here. Uh, whether it's a male doctor or female doctor, uh, you know, or a gay doctor or whatever kind of doctor. So most doctors are really good people. I've got lots of doctors as close friends, uh, Western medicine doctors and doctors from, you know, you, you can imagine all kinds of modalities. Doctors don't set out to be unsupported people. Doctors are busy, and often very busy and often highly stressed kind of people. If you look at Western medicine now, it's almost become like a, a bit of a, a supermarket, isn't it? I mean, people queue up at the checkout, you know, in the waiting room, they go to the front counter, you know, and then they get shuffled into little cubicles or into rooms and they sit down there and, you know, and then they get, you know, given a prescription and they get pushed out. This is quite common. I'm nearly 60 now. And if I look back at my childhood, we didn't have medical clinics as such. We had the family doctor. We had, you know, a place where mum would take me, you know, and then I'd sit down and I'd talk with the guy and, or the lady, but usually it was a guy back in those days. And we knew Dr. Lee, Dr. Eric Lee was our family doctor. We knew this guy for 25, 30 years, a long, long time. And then when Dr. Lee passed, his son took over. That's how it used to be. And Dr. Lee knew my family. He knew that dad was a womanizer. He knew that my stepfather was a drinker. You know, he knew different things about the family. He was privy to this confidential information, which he, he held close to his chest. He knew all this kind of stuff. He knew that mum would like to come in and have a bit of a, a talk about that dad was playing up again and she wasn't happy. So he was a counsellor, a confidant. He was a friend to the family. And I remember when mum was really sick, once he'd come to the house. He'd do, he'd do house calls quite regularly to see you know the kids. Or I can remember Dr. Lee quite well. He was a caring doctor, a nice man. Those doctor days are gone, people. You may find them in remote outblocks in villages in Saskatchewan or places like that, wherever that is, out in, the, out in the sticks. But in the bigger cities, you don't find that. But you can still find lots of caring doctors. Don't let your current doctor pull the wool over your eyes or bully you or make you feel bad in any way, shape or form. That's not the doctor's uh, role. It's not the doctor's position to do so. I don't like it when doctors disempower people or take the power away from you, making you feel like a silly fool, incapable of making your own decisions. <clears throat> but as I said, most doctors are caring and supportive people. But you do get rude doctors. You do get uncaring doctors, unsupportive doctors, just like you get that in any other kind of profession. Like I've met quite a lot of rude Uber drivers, for example. So you can't tar all people with the same brush. Right? But... If you have got an unsupportive doctor who doesn't seem to care, you need to find somebody else. You need to get onto an association and try and find someone who's quite nice. And there are plenty of nice doctors out there. Okay, You need to be heard. Your voice needs to be heard. If you've got problems, you're not getting any satisfaction with your case, you've got issues or symptoms, if, you're being feel, if you feel like you're being treated like a fool, uh, you need to go somewhere else. You wouldn't put up with that with an electrician or plumber. Okay, you need to find somebody else. And there are other people. Sometimes you have to pay more to get, you know, a different type of person. But I'm sure you understand what I mean. Your health is well worth this. So you need to be listened to. This is a very important aspect. And this is why many people come to naturopaths like me, is because we take the time to listen to people. We listen to things and take things seriously that often the medical profession don't take seriously or disregard. Okay? I don't disregard anything a patient tells me. Some people put spin on things. You know, they may blow a symptom up, make a symptom far worse than it is, or they may downplay a symptom. So a, a good practitioner needs really to be a, a kind of a psychologist to understand human nature, you know, to work these kind of things out. But if you want a caring and supportive person, they are out there, you just have to find them. Okay? And sometimes you may need to work with two people. So how much time does your doctor spend with you? Five minutes, ten minutes, it's not good enough. That's only enough time to say hello and goodbye. I mean, you need more time than that. And in Western medicine, unfortunately, these days, we only get like a ten-minute time slot, which is not good. It's not uncommon for a doctor to see 40 or 50 patients in a day. 
I've never seen any more than seven in a day or eight in a day all my career. I could not work any any more than that. It's just too intense. So I prefer not to take any more than two or max three new cases per day and generally the rest of the day see follow-up patients. But my clinic's coming to a close now. 31st of November this year, 2019, I stopped seeing patients because I'm going to spend more time doing this kind of work, uh, educational stuff on YouTube and hopefully go live on YouTube or Facebook to spend more time answering people's questions. That's something I'd like to give back and to keep on educating people. I think it's very important to do that. So when you leave your practitioner's office, you should feel inspired. You should feel confident. You should feel happy and have some type of a plan in mind on which direction you're going. All right? I'm going to read something out to you which was written for me by one of my mentors a long time ago. Remember that the talk you have with your patient can go such a long way towards helping him or her there and then. It will also create a foundation of confidence in you as a practitioner and in the remedies as medicine that you prescribe. Let every patient who leaves your office feel better than when they first stepped in. Let this be a cardinal rule of your practice and your success will be assured. My success has been assured. I've had a very successful clinic now for over 30 years. I've always tried to make people feel good about themselves. It's difficult sometimes in working with mental health patients, but that's the thing. When you leave your doctor's office, you should feel good. If you don't feel good and you feel bad, particularly if something bad's been said to you, you need to think about seeing somebody else because that's only going to undermine your health more and cause more stress for you and your family. I think you know what I'm saying. You need to have a relationship with that person that's going to help you through your health challenges. It's getting harder and harder to find good people now, but they're still out there. Don't give up. There are plenty of excellent doctors out there. I've met some fantastic Western medical doctors that are in it for the right reasons. They didn't get into medicine to make money. They got into medicine to help people. But you also have to respect your doctor and understand that he or she has a family life and be careful with calling or emailing their office because, like me, They'll have thousands of cases they're working with, and they often get snowed under with work. So be sure that you've got all your questions there and then when you go to the clinic. You've got all the pertinent information, the questions you want to ask, and then you know what I mean? It's a proper meeting. So try and understand that, that you need to get things achieved both from your side and the doctor's side. And when you understand that, it'll be a lot smoother for both of you. All right? So I hope this has been a worthwhile video. Don't necessarily feel bad about your doctor. He or she may be having a hard day. And if you're not happy, communicate those feelings, but in a positive way and ask for somebody else or find another doctor that you can have a relationship with. Because it's critical if you want to get better is to form that relationship with the person who's there, supposed to be there to help you overcome your health challenges. Thanks for tuning in.